Welcome back. We are live until 12.30. Lots in store. In just a moment, two-year-old Morgan was born with one side of his face severely disfigured due to a condition so rare that it only affects 200 children in the UK. The family's fight to raise awareness of Golden Haar Syndrome is next. Also stylist to the stars, Charles Worthington really has his... Now, when Kerry Holmes went for her 20-week pregnancy scan, she was given some news that every expectant mother would dread. There was a chance that her baby would be born brain damaged. However, after an agonising wait on the 7th of February 2007, Kelly gave birth to little Morgan, who weighed a healthy six pounds and two ounces. And, surprisingly and fabulously, Morgan did not suffer any form of brain damage. He was, however, diagnosed with Golden Haar Syndrome, a condition that is thought to affect only 200 children in the UK. His mum, Kerry, is here now with uh, grandfather, Alan, who's in the green room. With, with Morgan. Uh, little Morgan. <laughs> and, uh, and, oh, he's... he's crying. He was he here a moment mummy. ago, but um, but he got a bit sad in here, and uh, so what we'll do is we'll uh, give him some juice. Oh no, he's coming to find you. <laughs> he's he's our first guest to walk out in recent times. Well, he's allowed. We'll Let's get him in, in a minute. Corridor, yes. um, so they're here to uh, to help raise awareness of the condition, along with uh, our very own Dr. Chris. And Chris, you were saying a moment ago during our health headlines that doctor for forty years, yeah, never heard of it before. Never heard of it until yesterday when our researcher rang up and I thought she said golden heart yes. syndrome. I think it was a heart condition. No, it's golden heart named after a physician who described this first in 1952. But yeah, very rare. I mean, you know, I worked for 40 years, so treated thousands of patients over the years. You come across a lot of conditions in your professional lifetime, but no, this was a total first, so I had to do some homework last night. <laughs> so what is it? What have you learnt? Well, the, the, it, as you say, it's rare. About 200 cases in the UK, that's just the guesstimate, really. Um, but th there are a, a wide range of abnormalities. It's basically um, in, in the womb, usually in the first third, the, the first trimester, the first third of pregnancy, um, when the, the, the head and the face are developing, they develop through various tissues coming together. And of course, most of the time, nature gets it perfectly correct. Uh, and with this condition, um, there, there can be all sorts of defects. For, for example, um, you're missing ears, uh, missing eye, which of course we, we know that Morgan has, skin tag where an ear might be, uh, mouth larger on one side than the other, um, uh, misshapen ribs, a vertebra can be fused. Used, um, hearing loss on one side, of course, with the, the ear not being there. Of course, that can lead to speech difficulties and educational problems if it's not, you know, dealt with. Uh, breathing trouble, feeding problems, even kidneys and hearts can be mm. affected by this condition. So, uh, no patient is the same because there's so many different uh, abnormalities in this condition. Well, that's why Kerry's here today, to raise awareness, because there are, we think, about 200 children, at least, suffering uh, in the UK, and there's no one place where they can go and have all their problems dealt with. They have to keep going from consultant to consultant, and each one goes, really, I've never heard of this mm. before. So that's, this is where we're starting from. So, Kerry, you, you were very young, 21, 22, yeah, just yeah. 22 when I had him. And you found well, you found you were pregnant and it was a surprise pregnancy. The 20 week scans we said, they said, I think there's a problem. They found out he had large ventricles in his brain. So then I was going to Oxford every week or two, having special scans to see what was going on to check the fluid in the brain. I also had um, an MRI scan as well to check how brain damaged he was going to be to see what effect it was having. And they told us that at the stage that I was when I was pregnant, if he was going to be completely brain dead, his brain would have been smooth, but he had little lumps on it. So from then on, I felt a little bit more happy, and I was like, right, fine, we'll just see what happens. So, Because you were offered a termination, yeah. gently, um, and you chose not to. I don't believe in it unless I know there's not going to be any hope for that child. Say if they were going to be completely brain dead, like wouldn't have much of a life. That's the only time that I think it's kind of fairer on that baby sometimes. Yes. And did it mean that you spent your pregnancy fearful? As to I just didn't happen? know what was going to happen. To be honest with you, I, like every day was like, what's going to happen today? Yes. Mm. And as those scans progressed, the, the ventricles that you were, were mentioning were still enlarging? Yeah. Um, they carried on. It started off at 12 mils. By the end of the pregnancy, it was 22. Um, but 
they thought it was going to be hydrocephalus, mm -hmm. which is water on the brain. And they were saying that they didn't want him to go over too much in the pregnancy because the longer he was in there, the worse it could get and that they couldn't do anything about it. So then they induced me the day after my due date um, and I had a natural delivery with forceps. Mm -hmm. And then they um, scanned through the brain again and they found that it was about 17. It actually looked smaller when they did it in the head. Mm. And they decided it wasn't the hydrocephalus. Um, well, well he, was, he was born on the 7th of February, wasn't he, in mm -hmm. 2007? Six pounds, two ounces. And, uh, and, you, and, and, and as he was given to you... He was 7'2", I think. <laughs> yeah, 7'2", was he? Um, and so, um, so when he was given to you, um, it, was it um, immediately apparent that there was a, there was a um, problem? Well, first of all, I heard Nathan, Morgan's dad, say his ear looks really small, what's wrong with it? And obviously I hadn't seen him at this point, and I was just like, oh my God, put my baby on me, and they put him on my chest. So obviously his face, I could see it downwards, and I was like, he's only got one eye? Mm. And he was like, no, he's got both eyes. I was like, no, he's definitely only got one eye. So that's then when they took him away and they sort of like checked him over and they said, other than that, he seems okay. Mm. So oh, look, he's heartbroken, missing you at the oh, moment. Oh, 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 look at him. We'll bring him in in a, we will. In a moment, two minutes, minute. and he with, can come in. He's with his granddad, Alan, your that's dad. Nice. So he... You fell in love with him instantly because who who could not looking mm. at that gorgeous face? It was little difficult face. though because I was expecting something mentally wrong with him, yeah, but not physically. So it was a little bit of a shock, and like the first day or two, I needed to get my head around it first. So I was a bit mean and I didn't let any of Nathan's family come in and see him. I had my mum and dad there because they were well. My mum was there when I had him, and my dad had come up just before he was born. But then I decided that I needed it straight in my own head, mm. like what I thought about and how I was going to deal with it before anyone else could, because I, I don't know why. I think it was just I needed to be clear about what was going on before yes. anybody else, because I couldn't justify it if I didn't understand what was going on. I can understand that. And he, you took him home and... We knew he, he, he had this sort of soft palate and a bit of a sort of... Yeah, he was in for two weeks because they um, thought he had a cleft palate, soft one, because um, that can be something to do with his syndrome as well. Mm. So he was being fed through a tube up his nose for the first week and a half and then they decided that it was OK. Um, so then they had to get him off of the tube and teach him how to bottle feed and after that they said he could go home. Mm. <laughs> so... Um, at what point was he diagnosed with golden heart? Because this is so rare. Was there a specialist in the hospital who could say, I think I know what this is? They got a specialist down from Oxford. Um, she was the one that came down and said she thinks it's that. She couldn't say it was, and it, it was when I was at home I got a letter through mm. sort of diagnosing him with that. And with information, with help, with guidance? Not really, not that I can remember. It was just sort of... Because at this stage he didn't have his trachea. Mm. And it just sort of said that they think it could be from an early bleed during pregnancy, but they're not sure. They can't be sure because some people bleed throughout their whole pregnancy and there's no effect. Mm. Mm. The, 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 the tracheostomy that he, he has now, is that how long do you think he will have that for? Um, he's had it since he was two and a half months. Um, they've done a couple of sleep studies on him which haven't worked out because obviously you see what he's like. <laughs> he don't like to sit still for two minutes, so... <laughs> um, the last one they did, they said it seemed... Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> Me! They said it seems to be working a little bit better. You better give him a wave. That's Hi, Mark! Oh, my... <laughs> I think he ought to make let, his way him, down let here. Come. Let him come, come down. Come in now. Yeah, oh they goodness. said um, the last one went a little bit better. We're waiting until April to go back. Um, they're going to look down there and see what they think of it because the last time they said his tonsils are large mm. and they can't be certain what will happen when they take his trachea out because he's got this piece of jaw missing here. Yes. Mm. And obviously your jaw aligns your windpipe, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so you've turned into a medical expert. Mm. You're now such a good nurse <laughs> that you can sort out the trachea for him, you can change it, clean it, do all what, whatever is necessary you do for him now. You made then, us laugh this morning because we were reading through and saying, because he's, he's got his, his eye now, his little false eye, which you constantly have to find he because keeps, he's, he's, in you come. Hello. Hello. He's had it down the loo, hasn't he? He's chucked it away, threw it in the bin. Yeah, he's done all sorts of it. 
Oh, there he is. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. Can you say hi. But hi. The, the brilliant thing is, in every other way, he's hitting all his targets. He's There's doing nothing really well. wrong with him at all. Yeah. School's going to go well, and providing the teacher sits him on the correct side of the classroom so he can yeah. hear and see the blackboard and everything, he'll be fine. Alan, you must be very proud of your daughter and this yeah. gorgeous grandson. Yeah, he's doing very well. He's um, obviously been through a lot. Yes. But, well, you uh, all have as a family, haven't you? Yeah, we've all stuck together, though. They've been very good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he missed his mum. But mom. the future's yeah. looking good. He may have to have a little operation, as you say, for the jaw, uh, maybe to have a prosthetic ear, but all of that's cosmetic. Yeah. But as long as he can get the tracheotomy sorted. Anyway. I don't know whether that'll be out there until he's had his jaw sorted, because... I don't know, I can't really see it happening. Hopefully it might do, but at the end of the day, if they can only give me... At the moment, they can just say, this might happen. Like, they can't say he's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. So unless I can get that, at the end of the day, the trackie to me oh. is part of Morgan, and it, mm. it's not an issue. Yeah, and if right. I can carry on with him being as well as he is at the moment with his trackie, mm. so be it. Good. Well done. He's we don't mind, do we? <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> you can say hi. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Morgan. Very Morgan. nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Alan, as well, Sorry. for bringing yeah, you Yeah, well, we'll, 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 uh, we'll make sure that, uh, that, I mean, now we've mentioned it, Doctor, if Dr Chris knows about it, then a lot more people know about it now. That's, <laughs> yes. that, that's yes. for sure. Yes, yes. yeah. We, and we want heart. to raise the awareness of this condition. Yeah. Yes. Golden oh. heart. Golden heart. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. He's exhausted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you would like any more information on Golden Heart Syndrome, then you can have a look at our website, itv.com slash this morning. Yeah, we'll see you after the break with uh, a bit of royal gossip. Tonight's bolognese is extra tasty. <gasps> Can I tell everyone? Of course, Papa. Extra, extra, read all about it. Dom did it, Dom did it. LV loves saving you loads of money on your car insurance. And our no claims discount can reach a whopping 75% off. Now you can protect that massive saving for life. So when stuff like this happens, oh dear, we'll just kiss your car better. Call one of our lovely people on 0800 127 127 or go to lv.com. With low deposits from just £15 per person, planning your family break has never been easier. For our best offers, visit butlins.com or call 0800 222 555. Butlins, altogether more fun. Oh, with so much going on in my day. I'm really glad I discovered this new Airwick Freshmatic Eye Motion. It's the only air freshener that releases regular bursts of fragrance and has a clever little sensor which detects movement, so it can adjust the fragrance too. And because it's always keeping an eye on everything, it means my home always smells perfect. New Airwick Freshmatic Eye Motion. It's good to be home. And there's new Airwick Freshmatic Eye Motion Compact. Small but just as powerful, with 2,500 sprays in every one. Every week there are hundreds of new offers at Summerfield. Carling Lager for only 6 99 is just one of them. For fresh offers every week, pop into Summerfield. When you turn on your smile... Britain's biggest ever bed sale must end Monday. There's over 50% off thousands of beds at Dreams. Free credit on every bed and thousands in stock for next day delivery. Don't miss out. Britain's biggest ever bed sale must end Monday, 8pm. Only at Dreams. Britain's leading bed specialist. Cirque de Glace, an ice show beyond imagination with the Russian ice stars at the Bristol Hippodrome from the 18th of March. Book now. When you can't sleep, nothing seems to help. Now there's Calm Sleep, an effective natural remedy that helps restore your normal sleep patterns so you can sleep easily and wake feeling refreshed. When you can't sleep, Calm Sleep. 
Sky Plus is a very simple, pure machine. It's not complex at all. And uh, it's, it's an extraordinary invention. Now there's an exclusive digital switchover offer for Wales. You can enjoy Sky Plus for just £49 when you join Sky TV. At the touch of a button, record a single programme or a whole series automatically to create your own collection of favourites to watch when you want. And if interrupted, just pause and rewind live TV. Go digital with Sky TV now and get a Sky Plus box for just £49. Love Sky Plus or your money back. Call 08442 411 496. Sky. We have a caller for you on line one. Mum? It's always a pleasure to hear your voice, Mum, especially when I'm live on air. Ah! Kevin Bishop and Chris O'Dowd star in a brand new comedy FM with Celebrity Jews starring Holly Fern and King. My name is Chief Lemo, and I'm Celebrity Jews. Happy hour tonight from 10, ITV2. Extra, extra, read all about it. Welcome back. Still to come today, find out if uh, stylist of the stars, Charles Worthington, has been able to tame the unruly hair <laughs> of our three this morning viewers. And more importantly, what will they think of their new sleek and styled do's? You'll find out, didn't they? Also, we meet the couple who married, knowing that they'd soon be not just husband and wife, but wife and wife, sharing makeup and swapping beauty tips. After the husband had a sex change. An incredible story of true friendship and unconditional love at 11.45. First, though. Uh, yesterday, three generations of the royal family paid tribute to the Queen Mother when her £2 million memorial was finally unveiled, just a few feet from the sculpture of her husband, George VI. Joining us now with uh, news on that, plus all the other royal gossip, is journalist Camilla Tomini. And welcome. Hello. So a lovely moment for the yeah, whole family really yesterday. Nice and a really nice statue, I thought, because mm. often you see statues and they look rather sombre. And of course, Philip Jackson has captured the Queen Mother smiling, as we always knew her. And he said he did that because he had done a, um, a bust, I think, of George VI while she was still alive and consulted her on it and said that she was such a smiley person that there was no way he could do it other than her with a huge smile on her face. Um, obviously, the statue is also interesting because it captures her much younger than a lot of people would now remember the Queen mm. Mum because she seemed to be kind of an octogenarian and beyond forever. And um, she's actually 51 um, at court, court when she's 51, which is the year she was widowed, in the Order of the Garter robes. And, yeah, as you say, Philip, next to her husband in the mouth. So mm -hmm. it was just nice to see the royals out to celebrate that. And although it was reportedly costing £2 million, it didn't come out of taxpayers' money. It no. came from the Royal Mint and the sale of their coin. crowns. Exactly. Yes. So, you know, the Republic debate's been uh, in fever pitch this week, so they can't quite complain about that one. No. Also, I think um, everybody really would appreciate that they would want a statue of the Queen Mother. It's been a long time in the making because, of course, she passed away in 2002. So yes. it's taken a long time. They take ages to commission someone, and then obviously it's not the quickest thing to do. Well, the so. Prince of Wales made a nice speech. Didn't yeah, he? and um, uh, oh, we're going to have a look. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Have a look. The completion of a fitting memorial that not only commemorates the life of someone who was held in such deep affection, but also commemorates the life and unflinching contribution of my grandfather, King George VI. At long last, my grandparents are reunited in this joint symbol, which in particular reminds us of all they stood for and meant to so many during the darkest days this country has ever faced. Very nice. I thought the Queen it looked gorgeous she yesterday. She had a fur hat on. Yeah. And actually, there are some reliefs around the statue itself, and one of them shows her with some jockeys. Obviously, she was a very successful horse owner. But also, there's another one of her visiting the East End in the Second World War. And, of course, she famously said after Buckingham Palace was bombed in the Blitz that she was glad it had happened because mm -hmm. it made her think that she could look the East End in the eye. Mm -hmm. So it was a it's a very fitting memorial, I think. Mm -hmm. Everyone will agree about that. Lovely. That's good. 
And Princess Anne, the hardest working royal, yes. we always know that, she was the Queen's representative in Australia exactly. to commemorate all those poor lost people in the, in the, in bush the bushfires. Fires. So she took day in, uh, part in the Day of National Memorial in um, Melbourne. Um, we discussed this last week because there was calls perhaps for the Queen to go out there and actually we discussed the fact that you can't just send the Queen at the drop of a hat. The security implications are enormous and also she is 82 and um, Princess Anne has ever stepped in. Does that perhaps expose uh, Prince Charles a little bit? Should he have stepped in because of heir, being heir to the throne? Who knows? Although mm. Princess Anne has visited Australia on a number of occasions and I suppose she's considered the next best thing to the Queen and perhaps as a woman is is better placed in that kind of scenario. So she was doing that and meanwhile we had uh, both of the princes while they were in London yesterday um, signing the Book of Condolence at uh, the Australian High Commission. Mm. Um, so although the Queen didn't go out there herself, I think that the royals have obviously gone to great effort and lengths to make sure that it's known to the Australians that they are thinking about them because it's a delicate time in Australia for the monarchy because the Prime Minister there is quite left-wing and is quite a staunch anti-royalist so they're trying to drum up support because... But it's interesting because the, the, uh, the, the welcome that uh, the Princess Royal got in Australia was incredibly warm yeah. and, it, and, uh, and I wonder whether there they would be thinking there is a role here because it's sort of the, the, um, the next level up of uh, we're thinking of you. Yes. So, so it's sort of representing what people 12,000 miles away are yeah. sort of thinking. Well the argument is, is that the Australians don't have a problem with the monarchy while the Queen is on the throne but they will do when Charles is. Sure. Uh, the other uh, argument is, is that the Australians have a problem with the monarchy but they don't know what else to have instead. Mm. So it, it'll be very interesting come 2012 when Rudd has promised to have another referendum to see mm. what happens. Um, but there's just been a lot of talk of republicanism mm. about because of the Channel 4 documentary and Republic, the UK arm of the group, say that they've never had more support because of suggestions about Prince Andrew sort of taking the mickey and mm. whether Prince William does enough and has an, uh, many, as many engagements. But on that note, they're trying to compare Prince William now with Prince Charles when he was heir to the throne. Mm. Mm. Prince William isn't heir to the throne, so he's not going to be able to do as much because his dad has to have something to do. And he so, has a job in the forces. And he has a job in the forces and he's, and he's in the military and so is Harry. And so the comparison is a bit, it's a bit chalk and cheesish at the moment until William is heir to the throne, then compare him with Charles as heir to the throne. Mm. But you can't do it when he's second in line. That mm -hmm. kind of seems to have been a bit missed. So just uh, just quickly from constitutional issues to matrimonial issues, yes. um, are they moving in together? Well, this is a kind of rehash of a story that was done a few months ago. So